I had a great response from the other two video blogs that I've done, and had a couple emails with some more questions about you know what I'm where I'm coming from with natural, respectful, peaceful parenting and unschooling. So I'm going to address some of those for you right now. Um, one thing I'm going to start with sharing is that 99% of parenting books on the market today are based and focused on obedience. They are solely focused on meeting the parents' needs without taking into consideration. You know, from birth that babies have valid needs and it's not just about getting them to do what we want all the time. Um, you know, I really believe that we're developing a narcissistic society by solely, you know, by focusing on having our needs met all the time. Now, I don't think parents even realize that, that they're doing this, that this is happening. It's kind of a cultural, um, you know, parenting mindset that's been passed down for, you know, several generations and even doctors and, and professionals tell us how to get babies to do what we want, how to, but kind of turning it around, making it sound like it's necessary to uh, let babies cry it out, for example, or, you know, forcing things, children to do things that they're not really ready for because they never will on their own. Well, you know, that's totally false. And I really had to share that first before really getting more into unschooling to have you understand that. You know, a child um, sleeping through the night, it happens, you know, by the natural course of things a little bit later than if you forced a baby to do it. But it doesn't mean that it never happens, you know. Every child's different. Um, everyone's an individual. So children sleep through the night at different ages. And, and pulling that into unschooling, children learn to read at different stages when their brains are ready. Um, you know, and one thing to also add that's really important for people to understand is, like reading is a good example to kind of share this with, that the reason why children all have to read at a certain age is by third grade in, in schools, um, all the text and all the learning material is the written word. So children have to, you know, for, the te for ease of the teachers, have to learn to read in order to take part and follow in the class. Now, when, you're, when you're, your, your child's learning through life and learning at home and not part of the school system, it doesn't really matter when they learn to read, it's when they're totally ready. Some children are it's between the age of like three and nine, you know, sometimes later, sometimes, you know, earlier than average, but there's a huge window of opportunity when the child's brain is ready, you know. Um, now that's kind of a weird concept, I think, for people, but, you know, it's not like a child's never going to learn to read without being forced to in, in, by a certain age, just like everybody else. Now in school, you have to have to realize that it's not having anything to do with health or, or um, ability. It has to do with the need, meeting the needs of the school um, and the ease of the school. <clears throat> I like the analogy of uh, growing a tomato that, you know, I could grow a tomato inside, but I'd have to go, you know, right now in the middle of winter, I'd have to go buy grow lights and, and uh, you know, the perfect kind of tomato seeds, the right kind of fertilizer and, and the right temperature. I could have a heater in there. You know, I could put a ton of work into planting tomato seeds and growing a tomato in my house, or I could wait till spring and wait till the soil's ready and everything's perfect and just plant the seeds and they'll grow on their own and it'll be a beautiful wonderful ripe tomato with with very little effort on my part very you know very little difficulty no negative side effect of a heating bill and the light bulbs blowing out and all the negatives that that would come with like forcing a tomato to grow early now it's kind of the, the basis of this mindset of just kind of going with the flow of life and and kind of going with what feels right and the joy and and uh, everything else that comes with with understanding and respecting and trusting children's learning ability learning is really easy for children it really is. It's it's a natural, joyful thing. Learning feels really good when it's not forced on you and when someone else is not telling you what you should learn. Children that are uns, you know unschooled children learn at their own rate. They learn what they want, but they they learn just the same. It's not. I think people don't understand that when you're not doing a school model, when you're not like doing exactly what schools do, they just assume that you don't do anything in its place. They, they think unschooling means uneducating or, or not doing anything, but nothing could be further from, from the truth. It's just different things, you know. Uh, it's really catered to who they are. Some children are really, really love, you know, um, numbers, and they're really, 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 really advanced with those, and some just really aren't into them at all. You know, uh, it's amazing. Study, some studies showed that, that a 17-year-old um, can learn an entire school career of math in like two months or something like two or three months some really short number because their brains are totally ready to do it all so you can take all that time into you know forcing a child to, to go through the steps of quote unquote learning all these things which they may or may not even understand everything's taken so out of context in school it has no real meaning in people's lives it's just kind of teaching tools but there's no context for them. So it's so difficult. Learning in school is so difficult for so many people because it doesn't have any personal meaning. Now in the real world, you know, unschoolers and people that, you know, homeschoolers, are their kids are in the real world every day. So we have real meaning for um, the type of learning that our children are doing. Um, 
so I just wanted to kind of share that perspective. And uh, yeah, I also wanted to share that like an unmet need that a child has, it doesn't go away just because you're not, you know, a child's uh, need to be home with its parents. I mean, it's really important, I feel, to, to meet that, but it's really a lot of negatives to sending a child away. But we're just so told that it's weird to keep them home or, you know, that you, people picture us just hanging out in the, in the house all day and not doing anything. We're out and about. We're out doing things all the time. We're living a rich, joyful life. So unschooling, if you picture like what most people do on weekends or on summer vacation, that's how we live our lives every single day. Um, and we learn as a side effect of just living a happy life, chasing our passions. So thank you again for the opportunity to share a little bit more about my views, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Keep writing in. Thanks.